Back on CBS Sports HQ, where spring's renewal is upon us. The verdant tones of Augusta just days away, golf's greatest canvas ready for our artists of today. Last year, an unforgettable epic, culminating in a 30-hole Sunday clash between Brooks Kepka and the eventual champion you see in John Rahm. Rahm now returns to defend in a far less subtle garb, but focus does remain this week on the most coveted garment in the game. As you take a look, at the current odds to win the Masters, Scotty Scheffler to no surprise. Your odds on favorite, maybe to some surprise, a shorter number for a man who struggled in the early onset of this season in Rory McIlroy, then your defending champion in John Rahm, who to be fair, we have not seen play much golf publicly. He is a member of the Live Golf Tour now at 13 to one to do something that only three others before him have. Back in studio alongside CBS golf analyst Shane Bacon. Uh, Shane, before we get into what we expect to see, let's touch upon maybe what we've seen thus far. This pre-major season has been something. Five first-time winners, an amateur wins a tournament. Scotty couldn't putt, then he couldn't miss. Like, how do you characterize what we've seen to this point, and how does that inform what you expect to see? Yeah, I mean, you're, look at the odds. I mean, it feels like the odds makers might have as good a clue as we do about who's <laughs> playing well and what to expect going into this Masters. I mean, you mentioned John Rahm going to live. Haven't seen a ton of John Rahm over the last few months in terms of the way he has played. And you look at the PGA Tour, you're kind of waiting for the super, superstars to sh start showing up. Mm -hmm. And it feels like this is about the time it happens. You get to Augusta, you start to see some of the big names that always play well at Augusta start to play well. Maybe some of those kind of long shots potentially could get in the hunt. Who knows? It's been that strange of a PGA Tour season. But yeah, I mean, in terms of the names we expect to see winning at a consistent clip, that just hasn't been the case. Either they've left for live, or they're just not playing great golf. Yeah. Jordan Spieth and Roy McIlroy not playing good, good golf right now. We'll get to some of the names in a moment, but just on the whole, the live negotiations along with the PGA Tour, they seem to be ongoing in the background, but this is, this is what we do, and we've done it throughout the last year and a half. We step back from it, we get everybody together, and we have ourselves a golf tournament. Do you expect that to sort of be the narrative once again this week coming into the Masters, or because we are reaching a fever pitch in these behind-the-scenes negotiations, do you think that'll have more of a visible impact on what we see at the Masters. Yeah, drama doesn't get a badge to the Masters. I mean, that, that's kind of how this goes. Mm -hmm. And we saw it last year when it was way more intense. It was way more intensified. Phil Mickelson gets himself in contention at the Masters and kind of punted every question about Liv. He knew what he was there for, and he knew what being a Masters champion is all about. It feels like that, and it feels like more so now than ever before, especially compared to last season. I think you show up, you understand there's a ceasefire the week of the Masters. You say nothing that's going to ruffle any feathers. You go out there and try to play some great golf and let that be the storyline. Uh, hopefully we can focus on what's in front of us because lest we forget Phil Mickelson finishing second at last year's like Masters great last following year. that outstanding Sunday performance when everything else was going on around him sort of skated the spotlight to that finish. There's going to be no skating the spotlight for the defending champion. John Rahm, we know the menu looks great. But how's the golf going to look? I, I mean, we've seen clips and maybe we've seen a bit of live golf, but unknown what he's going to bring to the table. What are your expectations for Rom this week? Well, I think you said it earlier. You haven't seen a lot of John Rom play golf, and I think that's a, a universal narrative in terms of following Rom and live golf. They play internationally. It's hard to watch in the United States. But one thing I do know is John Rom is going to show up at Augusta National and play some good golf. Five top nine finishes in his last six starts, including, of course, the win last year at Augusta National. This is a golf course that lends itself to players that understand what the golf course asks and tends to play well in and around the greens. You don't have to be a great putter to win at Augusta National, but you do need to be a great chipper and pitcher of the golf ball. John Rahm, one of the best in the world at that. He will be in and around contention come the weekend. It's going to be exciting if we can inject those guys back into this game and get some of the names that we've grown accustomed to that are still on the PGA Tour, most notably Scotty Scheffler. Rory McIlroy has not had the season that he is expected to this point. You gave a great statistic about Rory and top 10 finishes heading into the Masters. He's been so forthcoming about what he needs to do, and he only has one opportunity to do it in completing that career grand slam. This is the only thing that lies in front of him. That pressure has been too much at times, or so it's appeared, but it seems that this is the culmination of all his preparation. How do you expect that to unfold when he has to put it on paper, per se? Yeah, I mean, he, he's played great golf going into Masters before and not had a great result. I mean, mm -hmm. last year, I feel like Rory was headed in and everybody expected Rory McIlroy to get himself in contention and potentially win, the, win at Augusta National for the first time. And what does he do? He misses the cut. 
I, I almost feel like this is going to be the most muted Rory interest, entrance into Augusta we've had in a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Really, basically, when he used to have the curly hair and he wasn't as fit. I mean, you think back to those Rory days. This is not a guy that's playing great. He's not driving the golf ball the way we expect to see Rory drive the golf ball, and he's not hitting his irons the way we've seen Rory hit his irons over the last few years. If when one's working, the other one isn't, and he's been open about that. He said, I'm struggling with the driver, then I change this, and the irons show up. So I think it's as big a question mark around Rory at this Masters as I can remember, especially when he's been trying to complete this career Grand Slam. And you remember, I mean, I know we talk a lot about the pressures of trying to complete the career Grand Slam for Rory McIlroy. This is also a guy that's now 10 years since his last major championship so to me all the majors probably feel the same for Rory of course he understands the history in and around Augusta National but I feel like when he shows up to any major he's thinking I got to win this or more questions follow yeah. and for Rory maybe the bad play maybe he finds something in Texas maybe something clicks but for Roy McIlroy going into it a little muted maybe a little under the radar that we expect to see for Scotty and Rom and Brooks might be helpful for the guy yeah what once seemed like a matter of time now appears to be a race against totally. it we are hurtling towards Valhalla, which will be a decade since Valhalla. Uh, Rory McIlroy hopefully coming in on form. We will get to see him the week prior to the Masters as well at the Valero. Uh, it almost feels odd to address it, but we must. <laughs> the man in red yes. hopefully is going to play on the day that he wears red. We take a look at the last time we saw Tiger Woods, and unfortunately the last number of times we've seen Tiger, it's ended in something like this. So I'm not going to ask you about expectations or what you want to see, but he is a man who sets goals for himself. What makes the week a win for Tiger Woods? I think playing healthy golf and for him, I think the weather kind of somehow eventually kind of meeting him in the middle. Mm -hmm. Every time he's returned to play, it's been cold, it's been windy. That is not a good recipe for the current iteration of Tiger Woods. If he could be a little warmer and a little windier and play tougher, I think Tiger looks at Augusta National and says, I can contend here. But for Tiger, I mean, you, you think back, it has been a long time since we've seen him complete four rounds mm -hmm. of professional golf, not just major championship golf. We've seen him play good, solid rounds over the last couple of years, but that's been a singular instance. He'll play one good round, and that's kind of it. So I think at this point, it's playing four rounds of golf getting through the golf tournament, saying to yourself, I can actually do this. Because you got to think back, it's Riv last year, the last time we saw that happen, and that was it. Yeah. I mean, that's really the only time we've seen Tiger play four rounds of golf and finish, sign a card, and shake hands. So I think, to me, right now, that's successful for Tiger. The seminal member guest, that's a, that's a two-hole event. You know better than I, right? That, I believe that. It's a one-day one situation. One, Apparently, yeah. it was pretty warm there. Hopefully it will be warm. Hopefully the playing surface will be fast. That's the only way to keep Tiger Woods, I think, in these dart fests. And we will see if we can get four days out of him as well. Shane Bacon, I hate to do it to you, but I do have to because unknown is the through line to everything we just spoke about. But I need you to know something. What's your pick? So you'd have to be a complete idiot not to pick Scotty Scheffler. Uh, I luckily am kind of an idiot, so I'm not going <laughs> to pick Scotty Scheffler. It seems easy. Okay. It seems lazy. Yeah. I like to go with somebody a little off the board for my pick for these major championships. And considering how weird a year it has been for the winners on the PGA Tour, five times we've seen a first-time winner win on the PGA Tour. I'm picking a first-time Masters winner in Jason Day. We've seen him have a lot wow. of success at the Masters Certainly. early in his career. But Jason Day's played some really solid golf over the last couple of years, especially this season. We've seen consistent golf from Jason Day. And if you look at his stats, everything has improved since last year when he got that win on the PGA Tour. So I'm just leaning into the strange mm -hmm. season we've had in 24. I feel like Scotty's going to be close and contend, but I can't pick him. I'll go Jason Day, and I'd love to see another Australian win at Augusta National. There's that great statistic of when wins come at the Masters in X number of starts. Yes. This would no doubt be on the later side, but Sergio giving hope with his Masters victory coming, I believe, in his 19th start at Augusta National. So not out of the question is Jason Day. Shane Bacon, we appreciate you stopping Anytime. by as always. And be sure to tune in to the Masters on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. You can also catch Shane on Masters.com throughout the week. Shane putting words to history with featured groups alongside Colt Nost and Billy Kratzer.